Hello and welcome back to the Shipley Art Gallery. In our last film, we looked at some of the ways in which studio ceramicists have worked with decoration when making pots, using traditional techniques of manipulating clay. But today I want to look at some less traditional potters and less traditional techniques. In the case behind me, you can see some works from the late 20th century by Gordon Baldwin, Sarah Radston, Angus Sutty. All of these are less easily categorised as studio ceramics. The works in this case show studio ceramicists experimenting with a range of different materials and techniques. Take a look at this piece by Gillian Lowndes. At first glance, it's not even clear whether it's a ceramic object at all. Indeed, it's definitely an assemblage of different materials. What it is made of is a tightly coiled length of fiberglass tissue dipped in a porcelain slip which recreates the appearance um, in clay of bark cloth, a traditional um, material used in, in Africa and East Asia. At first glance, this object looks like it's made of metal, maybe, or charred paper. Once you actually hold it, it's very clear that it is a ceramic object. It has a cold, heavy touch of ceramics. Heavy is the operative word. This is a distinctly heavy, solid piece. It's a very unusual artwork to hold, and it's something that I would handle very, very rarely. But holding it, you get a sense of, one, its enormous strength. It's extremely weighty and sturdy, but also its fragility. It's, there's no, with the assembly of wires and, and flattened fiberglass, it almost crackles to the touch, so it's a, quite an alarming thing to hold. And Gillian Lowndes actually provided, often with a lot of her artworks, instructions about how to handle them, um, to handle them safely. So to look at a couple of more works by Gillian Lowndes, we have this piece, another sculptural form, um, and once again one made with uh, sheets of fiberglass dipped in a porcelain slip. So taking a very similar form to the one, the, the larger one that we saw upstairs, but here using wire in a much more uh, creative and playful way. Um, so these exposed pieces of, of wire, some of them in different degrees of, of rust and decay, are all piling out of the top of the artwork. During the 1980s, Lowndes made a number of pieces with the same title which is, the puff adder cannot fly, but it still catches the hornbill, which is an Ashanti proverb that Lowndes had picked up while working in Africa, uh, in southern uh, Ghana. The puff adder sculptures undoubtedly take on this slightly gnarled, grotesque form of snakes that is in the name, with these unusual but obvious head shapes and the body coiling away beneath. The work itself is made from this sort of construction of wire um, bound together with Egyptian paste and small bits of um, scrap clay and granite uh, embedded in it. So it is actually quite a, again, quite a sturdy object, but one which feels unstable and fragile. And both these objects, um, there's no clear way to, to display them. It's not entirely clear which is the front or the back. They're things which do, do benefit from being looked around and seen from a number of angles. With these works by Annette Regal, we're really breaking free from any traditional confines of studio ceramics. It might be more correct to call these sculptures made using clay or incorporating clay. They don't f take any standard form once again. They're not obviously vases or domestic ware or anything like that. They don't even take conventional sculptural forms, they don't represent a human figure. They seem more inspired by landscapes and seascapes. They definitely look like very natural forms, almost more built by nature than by, by the human hand. What Annette Regal has done is, is to combine these heavily grogged bodies incorporating granite and feldspar in such a way to make shapes which seem like they come from nature. And looking at them closely, they, although they're extremely strong and heavy works, they're, they're splintered and cracked, especially as the clay and the feldspar interact and 
um, have sort of separated out in the kiln. So they're these works that are, look very stable, look very natural, but are actually quite fragile, quite almost, they almost feel like they might crumble. One of the themes that I've returned to when talking about these ceramicists who are breaking the mould of traditional studio ceramics and using unusual materials is this question, this um, balance between strength and fragility. Because ceramics, I mean the, the whole purpose of tr the tradition of ceramics is to produce these lasting, stable, solid um, pieces which can, can be used in a, you know, in a domestic or industrial setting. Um, and what we see with works like those by Lowndes and these two pieces, which by an artist called Deirdre Hawthorne, is how the works can become more broken and fragile um, by using non-traditional objects. So these two um, pieces of earthenware are literally pierced and uh, punctured with tacks and with nails and with staples. Um, the clay form is, is broken through by different materials and you can see looking at them that the uh, staples are, are, are rusting, the nails are rusting, it's altering the, comp you know, the very composition of these objects. They look aggressive and strong and fierce and they are and they're also delicate and unstable and fragile and that balance is one of the things that makes them quite fascinating. I wanted to close taking the opportunity to show you something that you wouldn't usually get to see when the museum's open. This is another of the recently acquired pieces we've got from the John Christian collection. It's a Gillian Lowndes hook figure, so it's a wall hanging sculpture. And like the Lowndes works we've seen earlier, it's um, different materials tied together with wire. In this case, uh, very unusually, um, slip dipped loofers form the backbone of this, um, this very organic piece. Uh, the reason it's, I mention it's broken and awaiting repair is this little tooth has fallen off the very end tip of the sculpture which is something which gives it its very animal quality. Um, interestingly enough the, the hook, the tooth itself, is made from a firing cone, something that um, potters use uh, inside the kiln uh, start out as little cones and as they, they melt at a certain temperature so it's a, a tool that potters use to see how hot the kiln is. So it really is Lowndes playing with not only the objects but the very the, the materials of ceramics. But whilst it is very strong, the materials are strong, the, the loofers are rock solid, the wire is very strong, the, stru the structure of the piece itself is quite stable and quite hard for us to, to look after and will need constant attention. Thanks for joining us for this short film about the Shipley Art Gallery and its collections. We hope you'll join us again soon.